So if you've never really heard of Neverwinter and have been wondering whether or not it's worth trying out, in this video we'll discuss the pros and cons about the game for a new player. Whether you're new to the MMO genre or looking for something to fill the void that was left from a previous game, we'll touch on reasons as to why most would consider trying a new MMO. If you're a returning current player to the game who hasn't played in a few modules, you'll want to check out my other video, Is Neverwinter Worth Returning To? where we'll discuss why you should consider coming back to Neverwinter in 2019. Neverwinter is a free-to-play MMORPG developed by Cryptic Studios that sets players deep into the forgotten realms of Dungeons and Dragons. In the game, you can take on roles of various classes, ranging from the Barbarian to a Cleric, from a Rogue to a Wizard, to a Fighter from a Paladin. With 8 classes to choose from, I'm more than positive that you can find something here that's to your liking. Whether you're exploring the harsh winters of Storm King's Thunder, or raiding in a battle to send Tiamat back to the Nine Hells, you'll discover, meet, and form relations with other players in the game who are on a similar journey. With access to 3 and 5 player dungeons, 10 and 25 player raids, and various different skirmishes, Neverwinter has a lot of content at its disposal. So if you're a new player who's trying to decide whether the game is worth playing, let's discuss the cost. Neverwinter is a free-to-play MMORPG that is available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. You do not have to spend a dime to access any of the past, present, or future content. But like all free games, the company has to make money, and this is where the Zen Market or the in-game cash shop can be found. Some items can only be found on the Zen Market, which entices players to spend money on specialty items. Zen can be purchased with real-world currency or with Astral Diamonds through the Astral Diamond Exchange. Astral Diamonds, or AD, is another form of currency that can be earned throughout the game. It's not going to be an easy grind to get that mount or that specialty package that you want from the Zen Market, so don't expect it to be. Most seasoned players would consider the VIP program one of the few items that is worth the one-time investment. A player with VIP does gain special bonuses and perks that a free-to-play player wouldn't normally have. This can include immunity to injuries, no auction house posting fees, and a free enchanted key a day that can be used to open lockboxes. Personally, when it came to playing on a free-to-play account, the only restrictions that really limited my experience was having to spend extra gold to recover from injuries, feeling like the time I spend doing every single main and side quest is stopping me from progressing at the level that I wanted to progress at. It felt slow, it felt repetitive, going here to kill a couple enemies, run back to the quest giver, go farther in the zone to go kill a couple enemies, run farther farther back to the quest giver. Really, really repetitive, but the combat made up for it. I've spent money on mounts, companions, and an absurd amount of enchanted keys, and honestly to me, through my 4 plus years on multiple platforms, this game has more of a pay for convenience type of model than anything else. With Neverwinter gaining an additional level cap to 80 from 70 this spring with their next expansion to the Undermountain, the leveling and progression within the game has changed from what it was in a previous state. While leveling, you'll go through the story of Neverwinter, visiting iconic D&D locations that have been turned into adventure zones that culminate into campaigns that require the player to complete quests, dungeons, and other in-house necessities to complete the contents of the module. You can visit the Chasm and discover the remnants of the erupted Mount Hot now to what developed into the Spell Plague. Neverwinter has been to the Underdark with Dritz, battled the Demogorgon, traveled across the Plains of Existence into Ravenloft, going as far as reaching the secluded deserts of Schult to reveal the mystery behind the Tomb of the Nine Gods. If there's a place in mind that you want to go, more than likely Neverwinter has gone there or is planning on doing so. But with all these adventure zones, main and side quests, how does it feel to level up? Leveling in Neverwinter is actually quite easy. The developers even made it possible to level by only doing dungeons, which is where most of your experience as a player of your class will come from. 
each adventure zone is tied down to a specific level, and once you complete the required quest, you should be the level of what's needed to progress into the next zone. Completing campaigns while leveling will help you stand on a stronger foundation when reaching the level cap. Once you reach the level cap, that's where the real game begins, and even then you've only just scratched the surface. A casual player can level up in probably less than a week, and Neverwinter does offer a buddy up system that gives new players special items when reaching certain levels within the game. You'll obtain gear, mounts, enhancements, and companions on different rarity levels, weapons that can be upgraded and exalted to legendary, mythic artifacts, and enchantments that have ranks within themselves. There's lots of ways to progress and increase your character's item level, which will be the way your character gains access to content within in the game. Neverwinter is a grindy game, and the grind is real, and it never stops. Neverwinter is the type of game that you want to play with a friend. There's content that can be done solo, mostly through leveling, but I don't think anyone really enjoys playing MMOs alone. I mean, if you do, then I guess you do, but I don't. When building and creating your character in Neverwinter, you have the option between 12 different races, three of which are locked behind a paywall. These races are better than others, especially for players wanting to mint-max their characters. There's eight different classes to choose from, with plans to add an additional race and class before the end of 2019. You have the option to change your character's appearance right down to the size of certain body parts, with new styles and fashion being introduced to every couple of modules. Before 2019, Neverwinter had one of the best player choice systems that allowed the players to build and create their characters in a way that would define their role and playstyle in combat. You could create a control wizard that was only meant for controlling, or one that had the purpose of dealing DPS, or a utility control wizard that could buff, debuff, and heal as a renegade. Neverwinter offered players the choice to choose a class that could be redefined with Paragon Pass that depicted a new playstyle out of the original. Within those Paragon Pass lied feat trees that allowed for even more customization and build dynamics to a player's playstyle. This system is what made Neverwinter, in my opinion, better than the next MMO. As of 2019, the old character customization that was favored by the community will be dusted. As of Neverwinter's 16th expansion, the Undermountain, classes, feats, boons, and paragon trees will undergo a complete overhaul, revamping the way the game is played, reducing what was originally 45 different feats of customization to a way a character is played down to 10, five of which can only be chosen by the player. As the developer stated, this reduces the feats down to much fewer but more meaningful and balanced choices. Yeah. With so many different systems changing within the game in 2019, it's a perfect time for new players to get familiar with the combat of Neverwinter. During the vanilla state of the game, Neverwinter had combat where your class and stat balancing mattered. If you wanted to play a wizard and control multiple adds with dungeons, you could do that. If you wanted to jump around the map like a grasshopper trapping enemies with your arrows as a hunter ranger, you could do that. Unfortunately, after some time, the combat immersion started to literally go off the rails. Classes weren't playing their respective roles, buffs and debuffs became out of hand to the point where it happened for far too long and Cryptic Studios had to put their foot down. This spring, Cryptic Studios ventures to revive the old combat that made Neverwinter different from other MMOs, giving classes that should have access to certain roles access to them introducing new stats and mechanics, giving the game more of a 5th edition D&D feel to it. For the past three and a half years, give or take a couple of modules, Neverwinter hasn't been dependent on healers or tanks. Most of the time, endgame players would run four supports and one DPS. This new change to the combat strives to break that statement and move towards more group-oriented combat through the Holy Trinity. Introducing new mechanics for healers and tanks that put more of an emphasis on their role in combat priority, 
Dungeons and other group content within the game do have mechanics. Smaller enemies have mechanics. This entire game is a mechanic. You can have deflection, block, combat advantage, and dodge mechanics to use within the game. Death, healing, and injuries do play a part, so the immersion factor from combat to player is as real as it can get. In 2018, Neverwinter celebrated their fifth year anniversary. The studio announced that Neverwinter had reached 18 million players worldwide across all three platforms. 6.5 million dragons and counting have been slayed. 325,000 guilds have been created and roughly 18% of the player base have created great weapon fighters or barbarians in the game's case now. Before and after those events, Neverwinter's population would have increased to decrease just to increase again and be on an endless loop like most MMOs. Neverwinter on PC has been highly active and continues to stay active, especially with the huge announcements for Module 16. The console communities have been slowly dying, but recently there's been a huge influx in players coming into the game with the recent announcements. There's people like me and thousands of others throughout the game that will not let this game die, and we will not let it die. So whether your platform be on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, you'll have a place to call home in Neverwinter. Every year, you can expect Neverwinter to release three expansions to the game launching on PC first with a 2-3 month wait period for console platforms. Each expansion typically comes with one or more new adventure zones, new gear, a new story, new mounts, companions, all new items in the game, new dungeons, and sometimes even a huge overhaul of multiple systems like the crafting or mount system. If you're worried about not having content, you really shouldn't worry. Neverwinter has a lot of content for new and casual players. When reaching the endgame, there will be even more content available for you to access, and it will be a lot harder for you to complete it. Even then, you still have to reach the endgame of the endgame, which isn't an easy thing to do. Speaking of the endgame, what is Neverwinter's endgame like? I went more in depth on this topic in my other video, Is Neverwinter Worth Returning To? But to elaborate on the subject, Neverwinter's endgame consists of logging in, getting your daily key, running a dungeon or a few, maybe popping into a raid to help a friend or some alliance members, then logging off. Neverwinter's endgame isn't the best, but it is improving and becoming more rewarding and fulfilling for endgame players. New and harder dungeons are being created, class roles are playing more of a part in dungeon mechanics, new ways to increase the difficulty of old content through the use of shards have also found their way into the game. There are 11 5-man dungeons, 8 3-man dungeons, 2 10-man trials, and 1 25-player raid, with 18 different skirmishes, some of which are on an annual cycle for events. But to go even a step further, the K-Team Challenge and Tales of Old event that brings old, easy content into the realm of the endgame players, subjecting them to serious challenges with different modes for dungeons that increases their difficulty and reward outcome. If you're worried because you don't think there's an endgame in Neverwinter, <laughs> let me tell you, there is an endgame. Even then, the endgame has an endgame. It's not an easy grind, the content is hard, but once you get there, there is a huge feeling of accomplishment. So what are my thoughts and opinions on the game, and do I think you should play Neverwinter? Honestly, I love this game. I would highly recommend it to anyone. For anyone that has an imagination, that is familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, this is a really great game that you should try. For anyone that's not into Dungeons & Dragons, this is still probably a really good game that you should consider. I won't lie, Neverwinter has had its ups and its downs, a lot of downs more than ups, but how they recovered from the downs is what really defines how a company sees their game and the community and how they can improve upon it. The studio's relationship with the players hasn't been the best, but in recent years, things have been improving. I would highly recommend this game for anyone that wants an MMORPG that will last them for some time. 
I wouldn't recommend this game if you have a weak will. Neverwinter can be very enticing towards players, forcing them to buy this, to spend money on this, you need that, and you need this later. But as I mentioned earlier, Neverwinter has more of a pay for convenience type of model than anything else. The only thing that I think that I would say to a new player when coming into this game is play with a friend. Don't rush your progression. There's lots of things to learn and lots of things to do in the game. It's the type of game where you will always have something to do or something to be working towards. It's a fun game and you should definitely check it out. So with that being said, let me know down below if you're going to consider checking out Neverwinter in 2019 and why. Which platform will you be playing on and if you have any questions about the game, don't hesitate to leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop it a like. And with that being said, I want to thank you all so much for stopping by. And until next time, my city needs me and I'm out.